And Renee and I thought that we would share with you ideas on how you can jumpstart your business. So the title for today is Clean Your Life to Get a New Start. If you're struggling, you might want to take a look at your environment. Right, Renee? Good morning. Good morning. Absolutely. Take a look at your environment. What's going on in your personal life? What's going on in your home? All your clutter you got going on around there that you just keep looking at and you know, one day I might use that. And that was 10 years ago you've been saying that. And what's going on in your business? What are you cluttering up? So we're going to cover a few points for you today, but we're going to start with decluttering. Do you want to tackle that first, Renee? Well, tax time is here for a lot of us or has been here. And one thing that I see that... I know I haven't been doing in the past few years is I've done a spreadsheet of all my expenses, what's coming in, what money's coming in, what money's going out, all my expenses. And I'm looking at subscriptions that I have that really provide no value to me. So I've canceled them. I literally have canceled up to about $3,000 of subscriptions and affiliate programs that I have paid for, have never really used, are no, no longer serving me. So I have canceled all those. Um, pretty much, you get to look at the view of your business, what's going on. And it, if you're not going to be using it in the next 30 to 90 days, cancel it. You can always go back at a later date, but cancel it for now because you're paying for something you're not using and you're literally just throwing money out the window. And it's really easy to jump on the next shining, shining offer, right? And there's nothing wrong with trying things out, but you really do need to pause and evaluate what really is contributing to your growth and success. So um, I also did the same thing. You know, I was paying for a monthly system that I thought, why am I paying $9 for this thing where I really haven't used it much? And I actually really didn't think about it past the first two weeks after I signed up. So you kind of need to evaluate what it is that you're subscribing to because all of that stuff is filling your mailbox and filling and taking up space in your subconscious, right? So you kind of need to just kind of let it go, let it go, you know, magazine subscriptions and, you know, and little memberships to, you know, video sites, et cetera. I mean, if you really need it, obviously hold on to it, but make use of it. But if you're not going to make use of it right away, let it go to kind of free up some space in your mind. So the, next, um, so the next topic I had was basically unscri unsubscribing. Let's talk about emails though. Um, did you cover that? The, the, you know, the, the tons of emails that we get from the many people that we've followed over the years. You know, have you unsubscribed to any of them, Renee? And, and if you have, what difference did it make for you? But as I'm going through every day, I look at emails and I look at emails or people that I've subscribed to in the past that at the time where I was in my journey, I needed to hear their message. And I realize now I'm no longer opening their emails. So there's, there's a disconnect for me between me and that person right now. So I have unsubscribed. And I can always go back and subscribe. But for now, I don't need their emails coming into my email box every day. And some of them come in three and four times a day, which is great. I appreciate it when I'm interested in the message or the value that they're providing to me at that point. So I'm unsubscribing, I'm decluttering my email, and I will, by the end of the year, have my emails down to zero. I will. I'll only be getting emails from the people. And I try, and I literally probably open up about maybe five people's emails a day. That's it. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Regardless of their title or whatever it says, I know they're going to have a message for me. I know there's going to be some sort of value that I'm going to get from that email and I will open it. And the rest I just pass on by, I scroll through and I, I don't really bother. So why are they there cluttering up my email box? Declutter your email box now. And you know what? It actually has a, a psychological effect on you when your mailbox is so full that you just kind of, you know, you kind of throw your hands up in the air. It's like, okay, well, fine. I'll clean it out later. Well, what happens is that it does slow you down because you don't know where to find the information that's really going to help you. So it may not seem like a big deal, but it really is a big deal. Clean out your mailbox, you know, your business mailbox, clean it out so that you, you know, and unsubscribe to the folks and, and the programs that no longer serve you at this moment. We're not telling you to quit, 
but you do need to focus on what it is that you're trying to achieve and who is going to contribute to that, um, to, to, to that effort. So the next one is um, getting rid of stuff. So Renee and I discussed, you know, getting rid of, you know, old books and papers and stuff. And, you know, she just mentioned, you know, tax season. It's like, you know, what are you, what's filling up your space? What kind of clutter are you looking at? What, what is your space looking at? Is it free? Is it open? Can you walk into your workspace and just, you know, not tumble over boxes and, and pieces of paper and, you know, cat toys and all that stuff? Or are you just kind of, you know, just kind of feeling stifled? So talk about what you've done for your space, Renee, as far as getting rid of old papers and old books and things in your physical space that were just kind of keeping you stifled. Actually, I just joined a purge challenge to simplify my life. And I've been on one for about a month and I've joined another one and it's going great. So every day in the month of June, like yesterday, I had to get rid of one thing. Get rid of it. Literally out of my house, get rid of it. Throw it out or give it to somebody. So every day, today I have to get rid of two. But what happened is there was actually a post on one of the groups on Facebook in my area. Single mom of, with four children literally had no food. She's got no food and, you know, everybody's judging her why she doesn't have food, whatever. She has no food for her children. So I literally went into my pantry and I went into my freezer and I just started pulling out everything that, yes, we may eat in the next six months, but right now we're not eating it. And there's a family that needs that food. So I pulled it all out. She literally lives down the street from me and I'm going to deliver all of this frozen food, all of this stuff that is great food. But you know what? Why are we not eating it right now? So I'm cleaning out my pantry right now. I've been cleaning out books. I've, been, I've thrown away nail polish that I don't use. This is not even business. Just literally because that room upstairs is going to become an office that when I walk into it, I feel very zen. I, when I walk into it, I feel like, wow, I never want to leave this place. And that's what I'm going to turn it into. There's going to be things on the wall that when I look at, bring me joy. And it's no different than any room in your house. Walk through your house. If you look at something and just go, oh, get rid of it. And we all keep stuff that we're going to use. Mm -hmm. But you're on a journey. Your journey is going to be different in six months, a year, five years from now. So why don't you just release it, thank it for what it gave to you when you needed it, and get rid of it now. Like, you're, like right. be still, your brain just frees itself up that when you look around you, the clutter honestly stifles you. It does. So get rid of it a little bit every single day. I'm not telling you to go out and spend a week cleaning your house out. Every single day, take something out of your house. Don't just put it in your car. Get rid of it. Throw it out or give it away. There's a psychological effect that comes with not only not paying attention to your, to your environment and just kind of feeling that sort of subconscious weight you know, you got to step around stuff and you're looking at a pile of papers, maybe a pile of unpaid bills. And it doesn't really matter if you have a, a specific office space, which you absolutely should if you're in business for yourself or you're using the dining room table. The thing is that your environment needs to be conducive to your produce, producing great results for yourself. And if you're not producing great results for yourself, you have to take a look at your environment because it is a major aspect of who you are and how your brain is working and how your brain is receptive to really great things that you're attracting to yourself, but maybe you just don't feel like you have the space to take on another thing. So we challenge you today to just really take a look at your immediate environment. If there are books that you had purchased that you never read, put them aside, put them maybe in the garage somewhere if you really wanna read them someday but keep the ones close to you that will inspire you. The papers, the notes, the, the sticky notes, and the little things that you've done, this and that and the other, go through them, write down some clear notes, and take action on those notes. You know, So your immediate space needs to be conducive to your production. It needs to be con conducive to your progress and your, and, and your success. And so take a real clear look at that. Let's, let's switch over now to talk about your circle of influence, right? So who, are the people that you're spending the most time with. Jim Rohn famously said, you are the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. Now, how, how powerful is that? You know, who are you spending your, 
the most time with. And this is personal as well as business. You know, if you're spending time with friends who, you know, who don't believe in what you're doing, they think that, you know, online marketing or, you know, the, the crypto business or the service, the service industry is just a sham. It's a pyramid scheme. They're trying to label you and you don't actually feel comfortable talking about your business, you know, with the people that you hang out with, then something is wrong. You need to find yourself some new people to hang out with so that you can kind of grow that aspect of your personality and that aspect of your life. Same thing goes for online. Who are your Facebook friends? Who are people who are, who are engaging on your posts on any, on any platform that you're spending time with? You know, do they get you? Do they inspire you? Do they force you to kind of take a look at yourself and, and say, you know what, I want to be like her or him. Do I want to grow? Do I want to step in his or her shoes? Am I aspiring to be like them? Or you're just kind of like, well, they're my Facebook friends. I'm just going to snooze them for a little bit because I don't really want to hear that negativity. Purge it out. Keep your circle of influence focused, okay? Um, I see a lot of posts, you know, I have 5,000 friends and, you know, who wants to stay? Who should I delete and everything else? Well, if 5,000 friends definitely does, inc does equal that amount of money per day or per week that you're going to make, then by all means, keep your circle large. But the thing is that you don't really need 5,000 people who are not interacting with your, with your, with your, um, with your posts, who are not, you know, who are not invested in your success. 5,000 people is nothing. So what, who cares? You're doing this for show or is it really valuable to you? Right? So think about that. Think about the people that you're spending the most time with online. Right? So think about, you know, laser, laser focusing your, your, your circle of influence, right? So keep, keep it tight, keep it small, keep it valuable, keep it precious, you know, just focus. Like watch the people that are celebrating your successes and the successes of people around you. Or are they only commenting on your posts when they're, they're fluffy and they're, they're, you know, nice kittens, nice puppies, uh, you know, some sort of um, whatever, sexual post or whatever, food, whatever. But they never actually celebrate anything you're doing. And especially the people that are from a company that you are no longer with, that are pissed that you are no longer with. But you know what? You're coming around because you can't be bothered. You know, let them watch what you're doing now, right? And you know they're just looking at your page. They're watching what you do. They never comment. They're not really happy for your success. Right. Think about those people. Do you want them there or do you want to get rid of them? I've gotten rid of a lot of people. A lot of right. people. Right. Um, somebody posted, I've seen this a few times, you know, when you say, hey, I got, you know, I just got the job and people just kind of jump on and tell you congratulations. But then you say, you know, I started a new business and people are like, well, you know, Crickets. again, pay attention to who's around you. It's okay to let those people go that don't fit into your life. It's okay. Actually, it's really good for you to do that because then you feel lighter. Then you feel like you're freer, you know, then you don't have to mince your words. I mean, you don't have to mince your words anyway, but sometimes like the clutter around you, it kind of stifles your creativity. It stifles your growth because, you know, you're thinking, you know, what is that person thinking? What is the, what is this group thinking about me? Should I do this? Should I post this? Be yourself. And you can only do that if you pay attention to who you're surrounding yourself with and what you're surrounding yourself with. You know, when you have those days and we've had them and we haven't had them be where you actually feel like a, an absolute, you're just floating by on your day. Everything feels good. Everything feels right. And you just, it's just like a, it's a big hug feeling. Yes. When you have those days, you know, you're on the right track. Yeah. And it's when you're not having those days that you look to see why am I not having those days? What do, not what do I want to change? What must I change? Like yeah. stop hanging on to things, companies, uh, affiliate programs you're in, um, people that you're following, 
stop hanging on to things because I might. No. If you don't get a feeling that this is powerful in your life and this person or this thing has to be in my life right now, get rid of it for now. Get rid of it. Yeah. You know, and it's not like you're quitting anybody or quitting anything. You're just letting, releasing it and letting it go for now. For now. And in six months when you're on a different journey from today, see what you need and want in your life and see who's still in your life. Yeah. That's a great point. I mean, you know, your goal is your goal, right? Your goal is your destination and that doesn't change. How you get there may change. Okay. You may decide that you're going to get to a place by driving. Your car breaks down. What do you do? Stop. You can walk, you can take a bike, you can hitchhike. So there are different ways to get to that goal. Your eye should remain on that prize and never let go. How you get there and how fast you get there is your decision. So don't give in to the, you know, the changes and the fray and the madness that surround you. Just, you know, surround yourself with peace and calm and things that just kind of fill your heart so that you can move closer to your goal in the most expeditious way. Keep your circle small. That's what the point of this Zoom is today, is declutter your life, look who's in it, look who should be in it, who shouldn't be in it, and just keep, your, be aware of your surroundings, what's bringing you down, and what, who and what are lifting you up. Because that's what it's all about. Okay, thank you so, so much for watching us today. Thank you so much for spending the time with us. We know that you have a plethora of choices of things to watch. And on Saturday morning, you chose our time. You chose to be with us. And we really, really appreciate that. We really appreciate your love and your messages and your comments, of course. We love to hear from you and have a blessed weekend. We will see you again next week. Any comments, any messages you want to send to either one of us and or both of us, please feel free to share. We'd love to hear from you.